Hi, everybody. How are you? I think all of you are on mute right now. I wanted just a quick, um, we're getting stuff set up here, um, but feel free. Um, you can utilize the chat box. So if you go ahead and click on the bottom of your screen there, um, you should be able to have a more feature and there is a chat section. Um, so all of you can connect, you can send messages to us. Um, and that's kind of how we'll be doing the Q&A session. So all of you right now are muted. Um, but if you want to either ask a question in the chat box, we can do that. And then at the end, when we do the live Q&A, um, we will go ahead and unmute you guys. So if you would like to talk, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started here. So um, welcome everyone. My name is Madeline Cano. I'm the Assistant Director for Diversity, Inclusion and Access in the Office of Admissions at Simpson. Um, this is one of our first Explore Simpson series. Um, we're really excited to launch this weekly virtual series. And so this is really for all prospective students, parents and families to really get an in-depth look at two different aspects of the Simpson community. So today we're gonna to be covering the honors program and I will go ahead and let Dr. Katie Smith and Elise Sturgeon introduce themselves. Hi everyone, thanks, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we're excited to share with you what we have about the honors program. And um, I have a student that's in our program as well with me today. So I'll let Elise introduce herself. Hey guys, I'm Elise Sturgeon. I'm a second year here at Simpson. Uh, I am a double major in political science and applied philosophy with a minor in Spanish. And then I also do the honors program. Um, I'm involved in theater, speech and debate, and the Culver Fellowship here at Simpson. Excellent. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so we'll get started here. Uh, here's just kind of a general agenda for the day. I'm going to run through a couple of admissions facts just some information. I know we have a variety of folks on the call. So some of you might be admitted students, you've already applied, you're ready to go to Simpson, maybe you've paid your deposit. Otherwise, some of you also might be prospective juniors, you're just starting to look at colleges and this is an informative session for you that'll help you make your decision. So we're just gonna go over some of those things and then we'll jump in and let Katie and Elise take over the honors program and they'll walk you through what that's like, eligibility requirements, um, some of the benefits of being in that program and uh, some of the curriculum that you might experience at Simpson. And then we'll dive into the Q&A and we should wrap up around 1130. All right, so we're going to get started here with just some admissions next steps. Before we do that, there's just some quick information. If this is kind of your first time or experience with Simpson, there's just a little background that we have for you. Um, you know, we understand that college is a really big financial commitment and so Simpson's commitment to you is that all of our students receive some sort of financial aid. And when you go through your application process, uh, your admissions counselor will walk you through what that looks like, um, but all of our students receive some sort of financial aid, whether it's through a merit scholarship because of your GPA or whether it's through your need based financial aid. We have about 1200 full time graduate students on campus. Our faculty uh, to student ratio is 12 to one. So nice small class sizes, which provides for a really intimate learning environment. You have a great relationship with your professors. And that's something that we certainly see a lot of our students really love about Simpson is that you really get to know the faculty really well and they're really able to help you with your career goals and even after college really help you in your field. We have over 80 different majors, minors and pre-professional programs. A lot of our students are really multifaceted students. So, you know, it's not rare to see a student who has a double major and a minor um, or even a triple major. You know, folks are just very involved in a lot of different programs and Simpson's liberal arts education allows for you to be involved in all of those things and still be able to graduate in a really timely manner. Um, in terms of success, something that we are really proud of is that a majority of our students, 99% um, after graduation within six months, had either pursued graduate school or were fully employed. And so obviously that's something, you know, as a student and as, and as a parent, it's really exciting to see, you know, it's a big financial commitment. And so it's really great to know that an institution like Simpson is able to boost that kind of success. And then the other aspect that I really like to talk about is our internship programs and career development. A majority of our students do complete at least one internship. Over 80% of our students will complete at least one internship while they're here. Um, and you can actually tune in next week, next Thursday, we're going to do one of these sessions on internships and career development. So you'll be able to check that out. 
So some quick next steps. If you're a senior and you've been admitted to Simpson already um, and we don't have your FAFSA yet, this is something that we need you to send. So if you've already applied, you've been admitted and accepted to the college, um, we'll need you to send your FAFSA. And that's something you'll just have to fill out separately with your parents, but that's really helpful for us in order to give you your full financial aid notice. And then we'd love for you to set up an actual meeting with your admissions counselor. And so now that we are working remotely and we're fully online, we do have virtual options available. You can just go to simpson.edu slash visit and you can click on individual virtual visit and you'll be able to set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with either your admissions counselor to discuss this financial aid notice. You can talk with faculty one-on-one. -on -one. You can talk with students like Elise. Um, we're really open to kind of helping you uh, figure out what it is that you want to do here at Simpson. So um, just let us know how we can be helpful for you. And then the last thing for seniors who are kind of interested in coming to Simpson uh, would be once you've been admitted, you have your financial aid, you're ready to go, you want to commit to coming to Simpson and joining our, our campus community, um, you'll pay your $200 enrollment deposit. And once you pay that deposit, you have access to your online student portal, which is called SC Connect. And that will really open you up and allow you to uh, experience uh, some of the new things that you'll have as a freshman. So you'll be able to start your housing application and complete that. And then you'll also be able to register for uh, what we call SOAR, which is Simpson Orientation and Registration. And that's uh, where you'll be able to choose your classes, meet your academic advisor, um, check out student groups, all of that stuff. And all of those dates are going to be in June as of right now. Um, so we'll have more updates for you as we move along. And then, like I said, this Explore Simpson series is going to be a weekly series. So we really want to engage with you every single week. So we have these confirmed topics as of right now. Um, so we'll do another honors uh, program this Thursday. Next week, we've got a couple of topics coming up, undergraduate research, and then career development and internships. Um, so definitely feel free to register for any of these programs so that way you're able to really connect with those folks who are running those programs on campus and ask all the questions that you want to ask. Uh, we might add more sessions as this comes up, so feel free to give us feedback. If there's something that you want to see as a group visit, let me know and we can create that for you. And obviously most important to stay up to date on some of this is following us on our social media channels. So. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or you can check out the hashtag and just see what folks are posting. Um, we keep things really up to date and that's really the best way to get the quickest news about Simpson College is just to follow us on social media. So feel free to do that. And if you are planning on coming to Simpson next year, we do have a specific Facebook group for your class for the class of 2024. So be sure to talk to your counselor about that so we can get you invited into there and you can start meeting folks, um, find a roommate, all of that fun stuff. And now I will turn it over to Katie and Elise. Thank you so much. I first just wanna say for all of the seniors that we might have on the call today that um, we're sure thinking of you and we recognize that the senior year in high school is something that you really look forward to for a long period of time. And this isn't necessarily what you probably envisioned for your senior year, but um, you know, we're, we're continuing to look at the next opportunity. And so with that, I wanna share with you something that we're really excited about here at Simpson. And that is our honors program. So our honors program is referred to as SC Honors. Um, and if we can advance to the next slide here, I'll show you that kind of what the vision is for the program and how it started. So SC Honors is an interdisciplinary incubator is what we like to call it. And it's an opportunity for our high achieving students to be able to work together in a team in a variety of different courses, exploring topics that are looking to try to achieve and analyze big world problems from a very multidisciplinary lens. And so that seems like a very high achieving goal, but we have been incredibly excited with what the students and the faculty in the program have accomplished in just the two years that we've been running the program so far. Um, this program really serves as a way for Simpson to demonstrate how dedicated we are to excellence in higher education through a variety of different courses, um, as well as opportunities for the students in the program. It's really been a great way to encourage some of these very motivated, talented students to realize other opportunities that they're capable of because we're exposing them to issues in the world and in society at large that maybe otherwise you don't typically get a chance to think of or think about and talk about 
in courses when you're very focused on your majors. And so as you've heard today already um, from Madeline, but also from Elise from the student's perspective, many of our students are double majors, if not triple majors and a minor and um, you know, involved in extracurriculars at Simpson. And that's one of the really neat things is that you can come to Simpson and you can do all of that. It's very possible to do that as well as be involved in an honors program. So we really think that this program and it's proved to be in its first two years, an opportunity that you're able to show that you can create knowledge more than just merely reproduce it. And so this picture that you see here is a great example of that. This is a picture of students that were in a class last year that was called choking on plastic. And they analyzed in that class society's use of plastic and the impact that it has on the environment. So the model that you see in the center is actually the students collection of their use of plastic from just one week. And they put that on display in the center of Kent Campus Center on campus to be able to educate the rest of campus about the impact of what they were learning in the class. The class also worked conjunctly uh, very closely with our bookstore to actually bring more eco-friendly options into the bookstore in terms of laundry pods um, that's available and straws and things like that. So it was a great campus-wide effort that the students were able to directly have an impact on campus as a result of what they learned in the class. So let's take a look a little bit here then at how you can be eligible to participate in this program. As an incoming student to Simpson, we look to have, for you to have a cumulative cumulative GPA of at least 3.5 or higher during high school. Typically, we also are looking at test scores, although now that Simpson is test optional and we don't require test scores, there's definitely more to the package than just that. And so we, we recognize that as Simpson, as that test scores don't tell the full story. Um, oftentimes, they tell a very little piece of that story, actually. And so we are looking more at the total package of who you are as a student. Um, what you're involved in and your extracurriculars. So if you haven't yet applied, there are opportunities in the application to Simpson to be able to provide that information. And we really encourage you to be able to provide as much of that information as you have, um, whether it's awards that you've received or um, clubs that you've been involved in, athletics, performing arts, speech, mock trial, debate, all of these things are helpful to be able to allow us to have more information at who you really are and how you might best fit in the program. And then I think the next slide is going to show us a little bit about how you can sustain involvement in the program. There we go. And so in order to graduate with honors at Simpson from this program, you have to complete five honors courses. The first one that most students will complete is what's called the SC 101. So regardless of whether you are in the honors program or not, all students are going to complete an SC 101 course in their first semester on campus. But if you are part of the honors program, we provide an opportunity for you to be particularly in a section that's dedicated to honors students. So that allows you the opportunity to be part of a like-minded community from the first day that you step on campus. And so a lot of the students that I've met with about this program, I, I liken it to the analogy of if you've ever been in a group project and you feel that you are bearing the bulk of the weight of that group project, um, you don't have those fears when you're in an honors course because everyone else is contributing to try to achieve that same very high achieving goal that you have for yourself. So um, we provide that opportunity for you to get connected with some of those other students right when you arrive on campus by providing you that opportunity to be part of an SC 101, particularly for these types of students. So that course actually also serves then or counts as one of the five courses that you need to be um, to graduate with the SC honors on your transcript. During the four years at Simpson then you will choose four other courses that are designated to be honors courses um, to complete that package of five classes. You do have to complete those courses with a B minus or higher. And then after those five courses in your senior year, you will complete a capstone project. And every major on campus has a capstone. It's different for every major. And so that capstone will be an interdisciplinary um, project as well that most likely will be very linked to what you're already doing for your major capstone. So um, more information to come about that as you approach that later on in a few years, potentially. 
And then the final requirement is that you maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.3 or higher throughout the program. So um, you saw 3.5 on the last slide, that was the GPA to be accepted into the program. But then recognizing that once you get to college, the expectation is, is higher in the workload. Um, and so it's maintaining a GPA of 3.3 or above. So why should you consider participating in SC Honors? Um, a little bit more than about the classes in particular, but we really put a high emphasis as faculty in our classes as a very engaged opportunity for learning. Um, not to say that the classes that you're going to have at Simpson that are not part of SC Honors won't be engaged because our faculty are very um, well trained in being able to engage their students in their lectures, but with an honors course and myself having taught an honors course, a lot of it is turned over to the students to what direction do you want to take this? What is it that really lights your passion? Um, and so when you get a lot of students in one room from multiple different majors, that allows an opportunity that's different than a classroom that you all share the same major because it's a 200 or a 300 level course specifically for your major. And so you get a variety of different skill sets in a room and it just allows for a really unique opportunity to accomplish things in a class that otherwise isn't typically possible inside of your traditional track. So um, as I mentioned, these classes really are closely connected to big questions outside in the world today. Um, and we do have these classes capped at a max of 18 so that we can provide that close knit learning environment between faculty and students. Um, I'm going to advance to the next slide here and then I'm going to allow Elise to jump in here with some of the coursework. What you see listed is just a listing of the titles of all of the classes, not all, but a majority of the classes that we have offered so far in the program. And then the last bullets at the bottom half of the list are the ones that you will have the opportunity if you are currently a senior in high school to join in the program um, next year that we will be offering here on campus. And so Elise, would you like to share with us some of the classes that you've been part of and tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, for sure. So um, my experience in all of them has been exactly what you said on that last slide. It's really led by what the students want to learn. So it's not just like, oh, come here's a lecture every day and learn this material and we're gonna have a test on it. It's very much like, what do we want to do? It's about challenging yourselves and your professors are really challenging you to um, go that extra step and push yourself. Um, so out of these classes, uh, my SC 101 was just immigration. Um, and then that same semester, I also took debating US policy and cybersecurity. Um, I took health at every size, and then right now I'm doing an independent study in the honors program. And then another thing is that if you take four foreign language classes in the same language, that counts as one honors course. So because I'm a Spanish minor, that gets to count as my fifth honors course, um, which is really nice about this program is that there are a lot of different ways and it can be very flexible um, in allowing you to um, get the honor certification. So that's just one way. Um, I have really loved all of these classes. They're something different. They're something that ch challenged me. They're ideas that I never would have interacted with if I just stuck to my majors or my minor. Um, just immigration, it was really much, we did a lot of um, group projects. So it was, it was an SC 101 and um, every SC 101 is different by professor, including within the honors program. Um, mine had a lot of group projects, which as like an honors student, you can hate because you end up doing all the work. You're the only one that's trying to really uh, get a good grade sometimes, uh, especially in high school. But that class gave me a community on this campus of other students who are high achieving. So. I'll have them in other honors classes. And even if not, like a lot of them are in my other classes. And if there's a group project, I know like, oh, I want to partner with that person. Like she was in my SC 101 and like she did a great job. Um, and I know I can trust those people in general. So um, that was just immigration and then debating US policy and cybersecurity. The entire last unit, the professor um, opened it up 
to um, us and asked us what policy we want to debate and what policy we really want to focus on. Um, and also, I know he's going to be teaching another debate class that's going to be about education policy coming up. Um, so I would really encourage that. I love Spencer as a professor. Um, was there something you wanted to add, Katie? Yeah, that's a great actually segue into the fact that that class that's listed there at the bottom, debating education policy, that will be offered next spring. And as Elise mentioned, that's taught by the debate coach. So um, you still have the opportunity to learn from all of the skilled staff and faculty at Simpson, even if you aren't directly in some of these programs. And that's another unique feature of the honors program. Um, all of these courses that you do see listed that will be offered next year on the bottom half are all going to be taught by different faculty too. So it's a great way to be able to connect with other faculty, again, outside of traditional, traditionally your major or your minor. Um, and I have other students that, you know, we're in, I taught the Health at Every Size class last year, and I'll show you some pictures coming up of that um, on the next slides. But there are students that, you know, sometimes find their minors or find a, an additional major throughout this program because they realize, wow, actually these large societal questions connect closer to me than what I ever would have realized, whether at a personal level or at a professional level. So an example of that is one of the students that was in that class last semester with me or last spring with me, um, she wants to do healthcare law. And she just took the class as an honors class to begin with, but then she realized, wow, if I want to be able to defend in a court of law cases around medicine, I really need to be able to better understand how the human body function works and a little bit more about disease. And so she's now declared a minor in health and exercise science as a result of that. And it'll be a really unique combination of coursework for her. Yeah. And I'll add on to health at every size like that. I would have never expected to take a class in exercise science. That was not part of my original plan coming to Simpson and going into it as a little bit hesitant. I was like, I don't know, this isn't really my thing. Um, but I absolutely love Katie as a person, as a professor. I had an amazing experience in that class and it forced me to learn about things that I would have never been exposed to, but I really, really enjoyed that experience. And I think it really made me like, have a larger world view that I wouldn't have gotten if I wasn't in this program. Um, as we, thanks yeah. for that, Elise. <laughs> as we advance to the next slide here, I should back up for just a brief second and say um, that I do teach in the health and exercise science program here. So I'm faculty in the sports science and health education department. Um, by trade, I'm a registered dietitian and an exercise physiologist, but I'm also a Simpson alum myself. And so you'll find that as a common theme across campus that this this campus is such a unique place for us and it holds a special place in our hearts that many staff and faculty have chosen to come back to Simpson for that very reason. So now, what does it look like for you to join honors next fall? We actually are really excited to share with you that we have two sections of SC 101 honors for next fall. And so you would have the choice or will have the choice between the courses that are titled Biodesign from Cells to Palaces with Dr. Ashwiti Subramanian. She is one of our neuroscience and biology faculty. And then the other course will be taught by our professor and chair of the theater department here on campus in Women Gender Studies program. And that's the Healing Power of Theater by Professor Jennifer Nostrala. On the next slide here, we're going to show you a couple of more pictures then um, of some of the classes. So these pictures that you see here are from that Health at Every Size class. As Elise mentioned, it was a class that we started out with in learning the clinical science, the health science around body weight and body size. And then we kind of merged into other faculty joining us from a philosophical standpoint about weight and weight stigma. Um, then we actually had Professor Jennifer Nostrala come in and she talked to us about what's it like to um, direct a play when you have to cast members of different body shapes and sizes, but also balance talent with who's the best person for that role and what does that role traditionally look like, whether in movies or books or whatever it might be. Um, we had the costume designer come in as well from the theater department and she talked about how she balances with the director to accomplish all of that to provide the best quality production. Um, and then after that we moved into a whole month long um, segment of the course actually six weeks of the course was taught by our art department faculty. So we had two weeks from an art historian who really took us back into ancient Greece and Roman art to talk about how the body started as a form of art. 
to help us start to appreciate the bodies that we have ourselves and really appreciate body diversity to realize that health really does come in every shape and size and there's no particular way that a healthy body looks. Um, and that you can't tell that by looking on the outside from someone. So my goal as a faculty member was for students to be able to gain appreciation for not only themselves, but for those around them too. And so the last four weeks of the course was taught by an art faculty member um, that taught the students how to draw. And let me tell you that none of these students in this class were art majors to begin with. So as you can see, Elise chuckling and shaking her head, um, they were quite honestly a little petrified on the first day when I told them that the last month of the class was going to be having to learn how to draw. But the unique part about that is that all of these courses are helping you to meet general education requirements that are at at Simpson. So the students in this class received their art designation for the gen ed requirement as a result of participating in this class. So um, the pictures that you see in the middle and on the left hand side are the students final um, projects in this class. And so they had to draw a depiction of their inner and outer self is kind of how they came to be and what they came to learn about themselves throughout this class. So um, if you advance one more slide here. Uh, we'll just kind of wrap up here by saying if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or to the co-director, Maeve Callan. Professor Callan is a um, professor in our religion department and chair of our religion department. And so we work really hard here at Simpson for the programs to have diverse leadership across campus because we recognize that students are coming in with a variety of different interests and different majors that you're going to be participating in, different programs. And so we want to make sure you have the opportunity to connect to as many different faculty and staff as possible. And I think that's about all I have. So I would welcome your questions at this point. You all want to go ahead. Um, you can either unmute yourselves um, or you're definitely more than welcome to go ahead and post questions in the chat box and we'll all be able to see those. Um, one thing really quick. Um, would Elise, would you talk a little bit about, um, you know, why you decided to pursue the honors program as an incoming, you know, freshman, you know, when you were senior in high school, what, what sort of drew you to that? Uh, yeah, quite honestly, um, I wasn't sure about the honors program. I got some, something in the mail in it and it got kind of tossed on the pile of college stuff I had. Um, but then I was thinking about what did I want out of this experience in college? And I was really worried because I was like, you know, I really do want to be challenged. I was a very high um, achieving academic student in high school and school came really easily to me. Um, and sometimes it could get a little bit boring because I wasn't being challenged. Um, so that was one of the reasons I decided to join. I also really um, liked the theme of the SC 101 class that was offered for honors. Um, that it was about just immigration. I was like, wow, that's like kind of cool. So I was like, you know, like I'll do the SC 101 and I'll try it out. Um, and then I was taking another honors class at the time and then I just fell in love with the program and I can't imagine my experience at Simpson without being in this program. Awesome. Any questions so far? And no question is a bad question. Not at all. Chances are if you have the question, somebody else does too. Right. We do that to our students often in class. It could be related to admissions. It could be related to the honors program. We're here to answer any questions you might have. Um, since I'm a transfer student, would any of this change? Like, do I, I don't know, are there any different, like, do I still have to do the, like, four required classes, just put them into two years instead? I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's a great question. Um, you're not the first student to ask that from a, a transfer perspective, and really that looks different for every single student, depending upon how many courses they've already achieved. Um, what's remaining for them in terms of requirements for the general education program here at Simpson. And so it's definitely um, not off the table at all. And we would just work with you individually in connection with the registrar's office to make sure that we have the best possible plan for you. Good question. Thank you, Sadie. Yeah, thanks for breaking the silence. <laughs> As Dave said, the first question is always the hardest. <laughs>
I'm going to pose a question just in the last minute here to the students on the call. Um, if you could design any class or take a class with any topic in mind, what would you like that class to be about or what do you envision that class to look like? What really gets you excited? What gets you going in the morning? What drives your passion? Anybody? So you can unmute yourself or you can type it in the chat box, no problem. don't want to share that's okay too um, but you know those are the types of things that we really welcome here at Simpson I think from both the student perspective as well as the faculty perspective is that we're always asking for feedback um, and we really take into consideration our evaluations that we receive and making sure that we're continually honoring um, and, and serving the students and the requests that we do receive um, we do have a question coming in here if you are already in an honors program at another college, do you still go through the application process for the honors program? That's another great question. So when you apply to Simpson, depending upon the information that's provided in your application, you may already receive a direct invitation to join the program. Um, and if you don't, that's not a bad sign. It just might mean that you receive an invitation to apply to the program because we need a little bit more information. Maybe there was something that wasn't um, included in the application that we would like to see, or we just wanna learn a little bit more about you. Um, so please just email me. I think that's probably the easiest way. And then I can, I can check the list and I can look into it. But if you haven't yet um, completed your application to Simpson, I would say that's the next best thing to get started is go ahead and complete that application process. And once that application goes through, I automatically get um, a list of students then that are eligible for the program. So it would be an individual basis, but chances are that if you're in an honors program elsewhere, you're gonna be well qualified for this one as well. Great question, thank you. Here. Um, so if you have any other uh, direct questions about the honors program, feel free to contact Katie or Maeve um, and answer any questions for you, um, especially if you're looking and coming in to fall uh, for 20. Um, and if you're a student, you can always contact your admissions counselor. Um, thank you so much, Katie and Elise, for helping us with this. We're really excited to this year's. Uh, feel free to stay connected with us again through the hashtag 